I'd like to call this meeting to order on October 10th, 2023, Tuesday night, 5 o'clock. And I'd like to review the minutes from September 12th. I need a no, that's motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I did not give you a formal financial report because there was no new concerns to point out in the uh, budget sheet. It did send the expense reports through the end of September. So if you have individual line item problems, let's chat about it. Otherwise, I'll make a note of the warrants. Uh, there were 11 signed electronically, totaling $59,359.29. Uh, any questions about the expense reports? Let's do it in minutes. Okay. okay. Um, on page one, yeah, the two that are like fifty-one and fifty-three percent there. Yep. Just, just ask a question. That's all. I mean, so those are that salary and wages for accounting staff uh, in the business office, so central office. So that is split five ways amongst the school, okay. and uh, the percentages changed since the budget was done. So I'll fix it for next year. It'll wash out that there won't be overages in those lines in the future and that we'll have funds to cover them. The uh, central office copiers, oh, I'm sorry, accounting software, yep. um, that one actually is an overage that we will also have to adjust the budget. So we updated our programming last year and are just now seeing the price adjustments. So um, everyone's gonna have an overage in that line, all of our schools. Will that line item be higher for next year it to cover? Should be higher. Okay. Okay. That's all. I just want to make sure I got it right. $59,359.29. Uh, $59,359.29. Yep. Um, and then you'll also see, I think we talked about last time, some teacher wage overages. The teacher line's about 10000 over. I didn't make a note of that. That was in the minutes from last month. So that's going to be recurring throughout the year. And then there's some other minor overages here and there. I, I think we're going to be okay and have funds that can cover them. There's nothing overly dramatic in there at this point, but we'll keep an eye on things. And we're still obviously watching the maintenance line because that is about 40% remaining. So we've spent a good chunk of the maintenance budget already, which we also did talk about last month. Any other questions on this year? Okay, so I'll just make a quick comment. There's more to come in the upcoming months on this, but I just wanted to give an update that Darius and I are already looking ahead to the budget for next year. Things we're looking at at this time of the year are um, retirements that we're going to have to pay out sick buyback or uh, longevity requests. And Waitley did have um, our longevity requests come in and per the contract, that's 4,000 a year for three years. And then we are expecting probably 10 to 15,000 in sick buyback on the retirement for teacher contracts. So those two pieces together, that's a $20,000 increase to the budget. That's you know, 1% of our budget just about. So uh, when we're starting off at 1% there, it just escalates things. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't find a way to fund those pieces without increasing the budget. We can consider rural aid, which unfortunately we still don't know the numbers for this year. The state hasn't put that out yet, um, but we are expecting that to be more significant than it has been in the past. Um, so we could consider using that. We could consider using ESSA funds, which we already do have earmarked the small amount that really has left for budget offset, but just conversations that we're going to be having coming up in the next few months. So did, I just want to put on your radar. Did the town take care of the retirement this year for us? They did with our funds. Okay. Yeah. It might really be time, and I feel like a broken record when I keep saying this, we might want to try to build this into the budget if the town can afford that budget increase. I don't believe that they're going to have ARPA funds. We're not going to have ESSER funds. I don't I don't know what their free cash looks like. We generally are having one a year the past several budget cycles. So, it, you know, just a safety buffer for us. Um, it is a difficult thing to throw in the budget because you never know a year where that falls off if you don't someone ha have someone retire. So you don't want to escalate your budget. But at the same time, if we're seeing one a year consistently for the past three out of five years, you know, we can also look at longevity and 
how long teachers have been in service and sort of predict say, what the next few years. Make an educated guess yeah, sort of we definitely can. What are the funds? I thought last time we met there was discussion of funds that we have to spend that we're sort of obligated. Do you ESSER can cover this or? It can. Um, but we're reticent to do that for. So the reason I try not to pay salaries with it is because then you have to pay 9% MTRS. Gotcha. But um, it doesn't mean that we can't pay, say, transportation costs from that and then pay the salary from budget. It's so, so, so we should pay some yeah. bigger things than hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, yeah. 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 okay. we never we will rarely pay in TRS. Yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to lose 9% on a, on a lot. Lot. Um, And rural aid will still will be an option as well. This year's, whenever they award it, which at this point, you know, mid October, by the time they get districts the funds, you know, we're almost halfway through our budget year by December 1st. So it's, it's, we'll spend it by July 1st, but <laughs> it's not putting schools in a good position. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but that is a conversation that we can have about using ESSER money as well. Or not ESSER, but okay. I'm sorry. Okay. You're saying that 20,000 approximately is going to be for FY25? Correct. So just wanted to throw that out there. It's something we're going to be talking about at every, with every school this year. That's it. What do you have for us, for us today? Um, just a few tidbits. We had our first <coughs> announced lockdown um, for the year. State and local police were on hand as well as members of the sheriff's department. The deal went smoothly. It's always our goal to, to be prepared, but also not introducing frightening information to our students. I commend the staff and all participating police officers of conducting the exercise in a very non-threatening way, as, as much as it can be. Right. And they're friendly, they talk to the kids. And, um, we had our first all-school meeting. Uh, we've chosen to move our all-school meetings to Mondays this year so that our music teacher, Rachel Gibson, can support the program. At our first meeting, sixth grade students taught the rest of us a dance that accompanied the song Soy Una Taza. And it was so much fun. It was just really great way to start the day. I was thinking, wow, I wonder if there's a way to do that like every day, start a day with a, with a school dance and then move on because everyone was pretty happy and festive. Arthur that. came home singing and you didn't know the words, so he was trying to, but it was very cute. You can Google um, the video and okay, watch so the perfect. dance that the kids are doing. So if your family wants to learn that dance, you're Challenge accepted. Oh. Challenge accepted. Um, our music teacher is great at bringing uh, music and dance from around the world to our kids. Uh, I was concerned that the sixth graders were not going to be really in the mood to do that, but they were they were all for it, so that was great. Um, we had our annual mom fundraiser. Our fifth grade students sold 408 plants. Um, mom delivery day is usually one of my favorite days of the year, as we have all those plants adorning our front yard for that day. This year, however, you might guess what happened on that day. It rained. It rained. It poured. Um, it was pouring during the delivery and all morning as students were sorting orders. The students were not the least bit phased by the rain. And I would like to thank Lacey Kelly and Lola Stone for standing in the pouring rain to do all of that sorting. Yeah, we'll, um, we count on Lola for everything. Um, on September 27th, the fourth graders went to Mike's Maze again, and they got a beautiful day, although it was after some rain, so it was a bit muddy in the maze. Um, students went through the maze and group answering trivia questions about artificial intelligence, which is this year's theme in the maze. Our students, as always, represented us well and had a great time. Um, open house was last Thursday. It was very well attended. We have 100, we had 113 of our 129 students represented that evening. And I feel like wow. everyone was here right at 5.30 when it started, because when I went out to open the door, there was just a sea of people. It was wonderful. Um, so families visited various classrooms and spaces around the building. The PTO provided apples and apple cider. Thank you for the PTO. It was wonderful to see so many students and family members here. After visiting inside the building, many families congregated on the playground while children played. We don't usually have such mild evening temperatures in October, in October but it was a gorgeous night. Um, and then just a couple of upcoming dates. We have another all school meeting on October 30th, PD Day, November 7th, Veterans Day Assembly, November 9th, and family <coughs> conferences, November 16th and 17th. That's that. Thank you. Did you have any questions? No questions. questions. Do we have any public comment tonight? No. Okay. 
Thanks to hard, hard work, everybody. <laughs> Your ongoing hard work. Thanks. Unfinished business, uh, follow up on a quality audit presentation on 928 discussion. Yes, yeah, so that came from the chairs. Um, they just did a quick email. The one thing they just wanted to announce that it was an informational meeting um, because the actual, there was not a quorum for, it was a quorum for Wheatley, but there was not a quorum for um, three of the five committees. So they just want to make sure that they knew it was informational and um, there's no minutes to it. And so I was letting the chairs know there's no official minutes to meeting in never took place because they didn't have a quorum. But we still went through with the information because the guy, uh, the guy Jim was from out of from Oklahoma, so we're not going to pay for him to stay another night so, because we didn't have a quorum. So, um, and then um, I kind of put in all the agendas in case anybody wanted to talk about being in follow up to it. So, you know, um, yeah, at this point, we're uh, where we are in that work is that we're going to be have a meeting this Thursday. With, yeah. No, it's next Thursday. Um, with the uh, equity, interest and equity committee, then from that we have the we have the, already the broad planning for the district moving forward. But we'll be the vision touches on that. And we'll bring it to you guys in November. Right. Oh. I thought it was a really interesting meeting that didn't happen. So. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yes, exactly. It was an informational session. Basically, there was no votes or anything of that show. Um, I think we're in the spirit of the opening while we're doing it. Um, Henry, are you going to the MASC conference? I can't, no. Okay. I, wish I, could. You know, I don't think Beth is going, so no, no. we could probably pass over the point official delegate because no one's going, or do we have to? You know what, Bob, let's just elect you. Okay. If you don't go, you don't go. Okay. That way, do I have to, if I have to submit it that way, I can't remember if I submit it or you bring it with you. If I submit it, we still look good you. You know, the redistributor in your business meeting to send on the this form in addition to the conference registration form, okay? Uh, so maybe uh, I, I'll sign, I can sign this. You want me to sign this one and give it to you? Okay, okay, I'll get you a second. Okay. All right. So we're not doing that or we're doing that? It's Bob. And then Bob's on the way. It's about. If I didn't have something going on during that time, I wanted to go this year, but I got something else, you know, couple going on and stuff. So it's also the holiday weekend. That yeah, that's probably that. kind of like, what we um, Veterans Day is that yeah. Friday. And yeah, thanks oh, to Friday. What do they do that for? You know, they want to say, well, just, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, for some people, it's like, oh, I have the day off, so I can get down there. And then, I don't know. So I, I always feel obligated to be at work during the school day. And there's some districts where it's super dead. They work the weekend and work school day. You know what I mean? So, are you going? Is anybody going? I'm sure someone's going. Okay. I'll find out. I know Carrie, what you're the first in it. Carrie would ask me if I was going because she, her, and I went before when you guys are down yeah. there. So you guys are the first of the October meeting. So I'm fortunately going on. All right. Um, uh, we got some uh, first readings on these policies: DJ, DJA, and DJE. So uh, as you guys know, to be um, policy subcommittees meeting to go through a list of policy that MASC put out last year. That we can have a broad two meeting, and then we realized there was just way too much just to adopt. However, meanwhile, coming out in August, they came out with additional updates. And so instead of putting these behind the ones that we're already waiting on, I'm going to do these conventionally because there is this is about purchasing, it's following the new laws and regulations that are putting into place. It's not, I don't believe it's, and I can be corrected by the committees, but I don't believe it's anything that the committee is going to strike down because it is just legal jargon. Um, and within the policy, anything I've read is they changed um, and crossed out. And you can kind of see that these are policies that we had, um, but they've been updated to match the new uh, procurement laws. Yeah, and the biggest change with these is the DJE, which has to do with changing the limit. They increase the limit for bid requirements from 50,000 to 100,000 for public schools. 
So it used to be 10 to 50, you had to get three quotes. Over 50, you had to bid. Now it's 10 to 100,000, you need three quotes. And over 100,000, you have to bid. Wow. It's not changed for municipalities, though, just school districts and regional school districts. Tell me why. Because I don't, personally, I don't think that most school districts have the capacity to do what it takes to bid these projects, for one. And two, the cost of educational things is just going up so significantly that they made some changes. Uh, and you'd have to, you know, it's smaller just like this. Shelly, you know, has taken on the coursework for the camera institution. But a lot of schools don't have the camera. So anything over fifty thousand dollars, you gotta go for it. Now you gotta close it. Gotta, it's just uh, the amount of dream. I think it's really done for smaller school districts because, like, if you work for a city, the city likely has a procurement officer right. that the school district is working for. But especially rural schools are not. And everything is, that. yeah, it's kind of like nothing is nineteen ninety nine anymore. Everything's twenty four. Yeah. Same thing with nothing's fifty. Everything's 65 or 70. Well, we, well, we're going to vote on these next meeting, correct? Yeah, so we do a double read unless we waive that policy. Um, there's no reason that any should have a reason to waive that policy. There's no reason to waive that policy. So we do read here. You can take it home, digest, come back with any other questions. I do ask if you have questions regarding, especially the, uh, you know, especially anything legal, we're not just driven by an attorney. Let me know ahead of time that way I can give you the answer at the next meeting. If you save it to the meeting, I may or may not answer it. This is really dry, but if there's a more complex set of MCAS, that's kind of how it works. So we do a reading and then we go to the next meeting. Okay. That way they also, we can't like, Beth can't come and say that, hey, you know, we just passed a policy when I was here in this one meeting and, you know, that kind of thing. That's kind of why the rules into this. Yeah. <clears throat> that's it. Okay. Um, FY25 capital projects initial discussion. All right, so we're starting to work on the capital list to go to the towns. Um, and, and right now, um, Chrissy met with Bill Hildreth and kind of made a list of where, we're all the way down there. There you go, um, where we're at. And at the same time, um, we I think we this year, the school committee is going to have to sit down with the select board and have a conversation about who's overseeing the, or, you know, out of all the each, each town, each school district is run a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And Waitley is kind of an outlier in the sense that the, the town and the select board have been overseeing major <coughs> projects at the school, including like the energy audit and that kind of thing, which is great. But at the same time, in the other towns, the school department manages everything, the school, everything inside the walls, so to speak. Um, and then works with the town and figuring out and funding those kind of things. Um, and the reason why I say that is one of the big things that the administration would like to see get done is the addition of AC mini splits um, into the classrooms. And we've kind of broken that up over phases. However, the town is kind of going a different route of insulating the building and then wants to look at, this is through informal conversations with people, wants to look at what is the whole overhaul of the boiler in the whole new system, uh, more of a more magnified kind of look. Um, I think the boiler, the boiler hasn't had any major problems. It's a type of boiler that could that could run along for another five, seven, ten years. Um, even though it's already, yeah, exactly, not going to work. Um, but we, you know, uh, Frontier have a similar boiler, and we went through years and years of repairing leaks before we even got to that. We haven't had any leaks in this um, section about section failures and that kind of stuff. So I think that boiler can stick around. So waiting for the boiler to be officially need to be replaced before we do any kind of AC with all the rebates big stuff that we can do um, is kind of where I'm leaning. However, I understand the other perspective because the other perspective is that right now we're installing mini splits in, uh, let's use Conway, for example, similar mm -hmm. size building. We're all in the two rooms of Conway have been have the um, heat pump mini uh, AC units. And but they run independently of the boiler. So you technically could run the heat and the AC at the same time. And so we manage that by, we have, you know, it's a small school and the studying that could run, make sure it's not happening. Um, but the next step is then to build, to get a BMI, BMI building management system, BMS, um, get a system where they, they need to tie those in so that the two don't work against each other and that you can control 
get all of them one thing, but that, that cost, that cost is probably a thousand dollars, probably more than that, a little bit more than a thousand dollars per room. And then the actual um, server or whatever you're, it's running off of is another thirty, forty thousand dollars. I think the server here is already updated because it's the same as Frontier, but it would still pay per unit to have it connected. Right. And so, so we did it in reverse fashion because I thought it was more important to get the system up and running, even though it would be inefficient overall um, to have AC in those buildings, especially up in Conway, they had a um, moisture problem, mildew problem, because they're on a slab floor. The same kind of thing can happen here. Um, but that was the reasoning for it. I can see some people say like, well, that's the most efficient way of doing it, but I always put operations in front of everything else so like get it to you know, the AC in the room, and then we can backfill the, the energy things. So the same thing, we did the same model at Frontier, and we're doing the same model at Deerfield. So um, Sunderland is like Whaley um, has an only library in the offices. And I'm not sure they're going to have the money. They have some other problems. They're not going to have the money to go to AC just yet. So um, anyway, so to have that conversation. So on our list is um, phase one of the mini splits. And we broke that into two phases of $60,000 each. Um, and we can do about six rooms. And um, with the rebate, we can get up to 12 rooms right now mm -hmm. with the energy um, savings that we get. And that was another reason why we decided to do it because we literally were, we can do a third more of the rooms. This one's, this one's saying 50%, but um, depending on what the rebate is that year, for the many splits. And so they are funding, um, Eversource does have a funding program for that. Whether it'll be here in two or three years, because our concern was that the money was drying up, although, we thought it was going to drive this year and has drive up yet. So there seems to be more and more interest in um, putting mini splits for heat pumps in new buildings coming off of, I won't get into the debate, but coming off of um, fossil fuels, mm -hmm. going to electricity, even though we make most of our electricity with fossil fuels, but it, eventually that's supposed to change. Sorry, so just I want to understand the order that you're going to approach this. You want to do the boiler first? No. No. I want to add mini splits. Mini splits first, and yeah. not look at the boiler and insulation yeah. things like that. Right. Well, insulation's already being looked at. So okay, and then we're we're done, right? Right. So they just the they summer. just came in and okay. finished that. So they're kind of going through the, the mini splits now. They're looking at the. I believe the town wants to look at the. Uh, I don't want to speak for them, but I believe they want to look at the boiler replacement with a new system, and then figure out how to do AC. With the new that. system, with the new system. Do mini splits also do heat though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that negate the need of the boiler? No, because they can only go to so a certain low temperature. Gotcha. And then, um, and I'm not sure how efficient. Right. One would have to say the efficiency level of a boiler versus that. However, on a when you start getting like April, late April days, do you need to fire up the boiler when your rooms are starting at 65 degrees if you have mini splits? You can just turn on the heat pumps there and you don't have to turn on right now we'd have to fire the boiler and whatever um the newer boilers when we get to that they, they have to far more pages in them like my frontier just put new boilers in they have three separate boilers they can just turn on one and it's got 12 stages in it so they can run one on very low and just get enough heat for the building without running last time we had to turn two Volkswagen size boilers to run in it i mean it was just the amount of energy losses is pretty significant so anyway I don't, you know, if the town wants to do it one way and we can be bought, sold on that, that, that's fine too. I don't know what happens when we get into a disagreement. Um, I mean, legally, what happens when we get into a disagreement, but um, we should have a conversation. We should probably have a sit down conversation with them about what is their plan and kind of have it out. Well, one of the other questions would be if we had the money to do the project on our own without asking them to fund it, what would they say at that point? Right. You know, if we use rural aid, which we're not going to, but if rural aid continues to grow, how's, how's our? Uh, I know it's never perfect, but how's our um, our I can't think choice, school choice money? Uh, I think we are going to have. I want to say like a hundred and fifty thousand projected at the end of the year. I don't think we want to dip into that. 
I know we always want to leave it for a rainy day, but if we wanted to. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about when we, we'll break down the numbers about, yeah. you know, um, we're going to need outside help for the AC because there's two other things on the projects. So, I mean, okay. for the project, why don't you go to that? The other one is the restrooms um, in lower and upper boys and girls restrooms. Um, that's for just about $10,000. Um, and then the exterior door frames that the GMs have to be replaced at, um, at about 4500 per door. So it's just about 14000 there. The stores are those, Chris? The classroom exterior doors. Right. The, if you look at the bottom edges, they, they're, they've rusted out over the years. Mm -hmm. Some of that's through probably the rain drainage from the outside splashing back up, but they're starting to get to the point where they're going to fail and then also create rodent holes. I think we're there. It's, it's, it's very, very bad shape. But again, so off, off the AC, we're only looking around, you know, $22,000 worth of 24000 24, for rounding up, um, which is probably doable. Um, and we'll have to decide whether or not we go for a warrant. What do we have for internal monies? But we also want to be talking to the town. Um, and given the fact that we have some other stresses on the budget this year, I'm not sure if we'll be paying for an internal. So, yeah. I know I was always a firm believer the school chose money for a rainy day, you know. But if we had if we had extra, yeah. maybe that's part of the way to even fund take care of the bathrooms and and uh, the door jams maybe. And and so if they find out that we're we're taking care of that in house, maybe they'll think about giving us a little bit of money to do the first sixty thousand or whatever. Right. I, I would say if we. Um, don't so we have a placeholder in the school choice budget of thirty thousand for special education slash special education transportation, um, which the transportation need changed right. We no, are no longer needing that. So at this moment, right. So I would say you know come we might, spring we, if we that money is year, available, year, so then we could do something. But I still think it's a conversation with the town because my interpretation of all the conversations we've had so far is that they don't even support the mini splits being installed if we had the money so that piece might be a bigger they have other bigger ideas and if we want to secure the funding for the floors bathroom floors and then the door jams that has to be done i think they request your capital paperwork by december right so we'll be bringing this to the next meeting um and then all the, all the final things we could all the print out about what we've done and what we're going to pull it on. Which I suppose at that point we could withdraw. You know, if we submit it and get it on the warrant, we could always withdraw it if we did have funds later and save the town that money. Because that's going to be a non starter. The mini splits are going to be a non starter. And there's other things on, on the list I'd like to consider. Okay. Like with our money versus the town? No, okay. 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 just off. There's a fairly lengthy capital list here um has it been, has we're it trying been? set it up for like priority right um, which we've done before from a number one to a number five or whatever but we still have a running somewhat of a running list of that already so we you know we get the whole list here yeah. and you know um i don't have a public doctor share so but i'll bring that to the next meeting and we can go through and we'll have here too to a lot of the ones through. on these lists this list are big ones so can you share what some of those are instead of curiosity or whatever? Um, so not a not an emergency, but the the floor and the foyer needs to be replaced, the cafeteria, the carpet in the hallways, at some point the carpet in here. Gotcha. Okay. Um, those don't all obviously have to happen at the same time, but there's different layers that like when you're doing the classroom floors, we did three or four at a time and then if no this if the ACs aren't going on there, if we want to start adding those common spaces into that rotation of one a year for a while. Mm -hmm. I guess I was wondering if this would be an opportunity to start thinking about the yeah. roof as well, because that seems to be looming large. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, there's like, that too. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering like how you, yeah. Right, and so, um, Right. I, I, what I can do is I can I can share with you. I'll send you a, a snapshot of the uh, Waitley page. 
Should we have this comprehensive document that we usually pull the section out to share? Okay. Um, because it has all the things in the wish lists and all this other stuff that the wish list fell in the hands of whatever somebody said would be a question why, you know. I've had people go to the bottom of the list and say, why is that even on the list? And we're like, well, it's a placeholder. Well, I don't understand what's in it. And then we start talking about something that's on line 85 and it doesn't, you know, whatever. It's kind of like you know, it's broken up where we gotcha. kind yeah. of go through the whole thing. So I'll send you a copy of this. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but right, the other one is that so we have we call ones, which is what we want to do this year. If we can find the funding, then twos, if knocking on the door, and then three is a few years out. But, you know, replace exterior lighting with all LED. Um, we want to work through the energy committee on that. There's money out there that probably can, you know, mm -hmm. we're trying to look for different ways to fund these things as we look ahead to, um, you know, the same thing with the boilers and the, you know, those kinds of things. So, all right, sir. Yes. All right. So next meeting, we'll bring that in and we'll be able to. Come on. I don't have anything to do. Collaborative. Yeah, um, I had a meeting in person for the first time in December. Oh, good. And I was just, yeah. I want to hear what they... I've worked with them before as a teacher. They do great stuff, so I'm excited to be on the other side of it. Oh, good. Yes. Um, what do you have for us, Darius? Anything special tonight? I got nothing. The only thing that's kind of new to maybe uh, we had our four town safety meeting last week. Basically, the police departments, fire departments, EMT state police all come together um, from the four towns and we discuss the safety protocols and that kind of stuff. So we had our first meeting. We meet three or four times this year. This year we have scheduled three times. Um, and um, we kind of came out of it for the need to do another. We do tabletop exercises. Last year we did evacuation tabletop exercises around gas leaks and that kind of stuff. Um, but on our talk at this year is to do active shooter and kind of go through what is each role, because even um, from triagers to whatever, to blocking off roads and that kind of stuff. And so we work as a group and then we break up into each of the towns. Each of the town talks about their specific sites, where, where do kids get moved to and those kind of things um, and that kind of thing. So just so um, you know, we have an idea of what happens in the city. And then this, you know, for those listening, there's another thing to listen to. But, um, that translates to when we had to be evacuated because of the train derailment or where it was, right? There was a tanker rollover on the tanker highway. Tanker on the highway. So we had to evacuate school, but we knew exactly where to go and how we we're going to do it and how we we're going to dismiss them. So it, while it sounds gruesome on one end, the, the parts, the moving parts of it are useful on other ends as well. Yeah, hopefully, and the only time we have to do those are those simple, just moving people. Yeah, that was very interesting. Well, <laughs> I, I asked Darius today. I stopped by the office. I had to sign some stuff. I asked him about the. Um, what did I ask you about today? I lose, I lose my train of thought. I'm sorry, but you told me that oh, the generator didn't cost us five thousand dollars. It cost us about four hundred something dollars. Came in to do the part after all that back and forth <laughs> with the town. They showed up and they said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah right. you see this one's four bucks." Oh, thank you. I left, I love, that's, that's, a that's a good thing. Okay. Because I left this meeting. Yeah. And went, I ran over there, walked in the door, and they, were, and they were already voting on it. Yeah. They approved the 5000 or whatever for the generator and stuff like that. All right. I had all my notes written down. I was going to be nice, but, but firm. But firm. Now we can. $4,600 that we can use for other maintenance no. on it. <laughs> Uh, if no one else got anything, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye.